Fuel for Thought is Fuel TV's new unscripted programming series that connects Southern Company Gas, community and industry thought leaders, for insightful conversations about the company's impact and communities it serves. The first episode, John Hudson, Executive Vice President, Chief External Affairs and Public Affairs Officer for Southern Company Gas, travels to Spelman College and discusses with their president, Dr. Mary Campbell, the significance of historically black colleges and universities and how they fuel, inspire, and educate communities of color. Dr. Campbell, thank you so much for joining us today to our first episode of Fuel for Thought. Well, it is a beautiful campus. You can't help but look behind us yes, isn't it uh, at, the, at this beautiful mural. Uh, talk, talk about this a little bit. What, what, what are we looking at? Well, Spelman is all about the tradition of women and women being educated and educated to the highest level with the idea they're going to use that education to go out and change the world. So these are all of our sheroes, as we like to say. So Ida B. Wells, Angela Davis, Rosa Park, Marion Wright Edelman, uh, Maya Angelou, uh, Dr. Evelyn Hammonds, Dr. Guy Sheftal, just Alice Walker, who's also an alumna. So many of these women are alumni of Spelman, but some of them are just some of our great heroes. Yeah, well, it's fantastic. Um, I know you are aware, we've had a conversation about it, but Southern Company uh, had a huge announcement recently, a $50 million commitment to HBCUs. And so HBCUs, uh, we believe, uh, are, are vital uh, in, in terms of educational institutions and preparing uh, the next workforce, uh, the workforce of the future. So talk a little bit about HBCUs and, and what you believe their place is uh, in the world today. Well, first I have to say, John, I think the commitment from Southern Company is extraordinary. And it is a one-of-a-kind, really innovative move, and I think incredibly timely given the needs of the 21st century workforce. So on behalf of all HBCUs, let me say thank you. Um, you know, HBCUs have had, uh, played an incredible role in this country's history. Most of them came into being right after the Civil War when slaves were emancipated. So here you had four million emancipated slaves and HBCUs came into existence in order to educate the leaders of this newly freed community. When you get to the 20th century, of course, we're facing as a community, Jim Crow and a segregated educational system. There was no place else virtually for uh, African Americans to go except to historically black colleges to get education as teachers, lawyers, doctors, nurses, whatever their aspirations were. And what's really extraordinary is when you get to the civil rights movement, where do our great leaders come from? They come from HBCUs. Of course, Dr. King, a Morehouse alumnus, being probably the greatest of them. And, and it was our, our students at HBCUs around the country in the South who went to the, uh, to the lunch counters and sat there and fought for the freedom that all of us enjoy to this day. So our role in this country has been absolutely critical. Now we're in the 21st century and here we're facing this huge technological shift that's about to take place. At the same time, that our demographics are changing. This country by 2040 is going to be our so-called underrepresented minorities will be our majority. And we will need to have a highly educated workforce. And when you look at HBCUs and you look at where most of the STEM graduate, graduates come from, they're coming from our HBCUs. Almost a third of our STEM graduates have been educated at historically black colleges and universities. So now more than ever, it is really important for us to invest in those colleges. And so Southern Company is, is ahead of everybody. And that's wonderful. Yes. Of course, you know, one of the reasons we wanted to do that was to bring, and to make such a big deal about it, was to bring recognition uh, to the HBCUs and to their importance. And, and hopefully, uh, other corporations will do the same. Yes. Uh, leverage that 50 million to 100 million, 150 million that goes to HBCUs. But how do we make sure that HBCUs remain relevant 
uh, as you talk about the workforce of the future. Kids these days have, have, have a choice. You talked about in the past, yes. they, they really did. Right. They have a choice now. And so how do we make sure that HBCUs are, are among the schools that our kids are, are really focused on as they make their college decisions? I think, I think students would be surprised to know at the record of success of HBCUs. And I'm going to talk about Spelman College, because obviously we're here at Spelman. Yes. Um, but a college like Spelman College, first of all, we produce more black women who complete PhDs in STEM fields than any other college or university in the country. And if you look at the statistics from the National Science Foundation, you will see one HBCU after another leading the way in math, physics, engineering. So in fact, the statistics tell us that we have, we have been experiencing a success that's not duplicated elsewhere. So that's a potent argument. You reference STEM education yes. and, and how Spelman uh, is very engaged in that. And that's important for us. Sure. Uh, we, we are an engineering company, right? right? <laughs> and, and we hire a lot of engineers. So talk about your success in that. I mean, what, what's led to the success of graduating all of these STEM graduates at Spelman? What, what makes Spelman unique in the STEM space? So, so uh, in the 1980s, a little history, and in the 1980s, we had faculty here at Spelman, Morehouse, elsewhere, who made a deliberate effort to make these places STEM powerhouses. And we actually, in those days, were able to go to the federal government, to NASA, to the National Science Foundation, to all of these agencies, and really build this strength. And so we gave ourselves a roadmap that we continue to this day. And that roadmap is start with summer high school. When you get accepted, make opportunities available for immersive experiences. Develop cohorts that support each other. Um, find ways for the faculty to support our students so that they have a growth mindset. That means that if they fail, they don't believe that they failed forever. They failed and they will learn something from it and they will get better. Um, so there are all these pedagogical approaches that we have been developing now for over 30 years. Spelman is ranked number one in historically black colleges and universities on the 2020 U.S. News and World Reports list of college rankings. Right. That's a big deal. It is. It, it's and, and we've deal. done that for 13 years. Wow. <laughs> That's, talk, about, talk about the standing as the number one HBCU. Uh, what, that, what that means and is that what's the next objective for you? I mean, if you've been that for 13 years, what, what ranking would you like to achieve in the future? We are very proud of that ranking among our, our HBCU colleagues. We're also proud of the fact that five years ago we were number 77 among all liberal arts colleges and now we're 57. And we really see ourselves as real competitors with the top 50 colleges in this country. And we're, we, we, that's where we are, that's where we're looking. Yes. But more importantly than that, than the number one HBCU or where we rank with liberal arts college, is to make sure that 100% of my, our students who are enrolled here graduate. Our, our ultimate goal is to have 100% graduation rate. Why? Because the most important thing for our students is to walk out of here with a college degree, a competitive edge, and post-baccalaureate experiences that are going to direct them for the rest of their life. Such wonderful things uh, are happening here. Such wonderful things have happened in the past, and I know they'll happen in the future. I'd love for you to talk about the legacy that you believe Spelman will leave, mm -hmm. and maybe the legacy of HBCUs. When we think, however, of the fact that HBCUs have been like a lifeboat, it's a place where we can come together and think about ourselves, who we are and where we're going, and continue with that resilience and that resolve, you know, to continue to really be uh, major contributors in this country. So I, I think that's the legacy for all HBCUs. I do too. I'm, I'm a proud HBCU graduate there myself. And um, I think, like you, that, um, that there's much more to do. Yes. 
Um, and so I'm very, very happy that you spent this time with me today. And uh, I'm sure uh, my friends at Southern Company Gas will enjoy uh, this conversation. Thank you so much for participating in our first Fuel for Thought. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>